Hi, my name is Richard Ragubasin and welcome to Inside Tourism. Now last week, we looked at hospitality in Trinidad and we discovered a few of the things that make Trinidad the vibrant people place that it is. And we did that through the eyes of a tourist. <laughs> well, that's only half the picture. This week, we're going to complete that picture in Tobago. Do you know that the largest known brain coral formation in the world spends its days and nights pondering life in the waters of Tobago? Yep, but as we know, brain is nothing without personality. And hospitality is one of the biggest parts of Tobago's personality. As a result, the island's hospitality industry is booming and a number of exclusive resorts are spouting up across the island. So more and more people will be inside tourism than ever before. Tobago's personality is strongly rooted and evident in all her traditions. And in Tobago, when it comes to tradition, there is one thing you have to experience, the magnificent Tobago Heritage Festival. We're about to meet a man who has tied the knot more times than a scoutmaster. Just take a little quick reverse here. Ah! <laughs> the old time wedding started in 1963 when Trinidad and Tobago had its first independence. Then it relapsed for a little while and it started back in 1988. I have been the groom three times, and the, but my main part in the whole time within is the father giver. My part as tourism and industry in Tobago is with regards to culture. I have been in culture all, uh, all my life, being a member of the um, uh, village council from 18 years until now, and I've been always taking part in culture in the district, and um, I think um, culture is one of the highlights as so far as tourism is, would be concerned in Trinidad, in Trinidad and Tobago, especially Tobago. And here in our district, Moa, the old time wedding is our highlight. on the subject of weddings and heritage, Tobago has long had a history of being the honeymoon destination for many Trinidadian couples. But more and more, Tobago is becoming a honeymoon paradise for many international couples. Now it's over to Richard who's going to introduce us to one such couple. Oh, well, as you can see, Natasha, this is not a couple that wants to be interviewed right now. So in the meantime, let's meet some of the people our honeymooners would have met since they've been in Tobago. My goodness. Is that legal? I believe every immigration officer plays a vital part in the tourism industry because we are the first government official the visitor sees on arrival and our impression would be a lasting one. So it's important that we portray the country properly. We would have probably over 500 people coming in on a weekend. Most would be on Saturdays. And then you have the same number going out also. So that's about a thousand people passing through the airport. For those of you who didn't know, I'm Trinidadian, it's out. And I'm also in Tobago, that's also out now. And I'm also <laughs> hungry. So where do you go? You go to Store Bay in Tobago, where you can get some of the best local food served in Tobago. Am I right? Yes, you are. Yeah, see, and this, this lady at my side here happens to be Miss Alice from Miss Sylvia's fame. Now, if you're in Store Bay, you know who Miss Sylvia is, not so? Yes, my dear. <laughs> so, Miss Alice, how long have you been working with Miss Sylvia? Um, over nine years now. Nine years, yes. and what's your specialty? 
see our specialties like crab and dumpling, you know, cuckoo callaloo and fish and also pillow. So when people come here and they come to Miss Sylvia's um, food booth or stall, whatever you call it, what's the dish that's most, you know, requested? Crab and dumpling. Crab and dumpling. Is that from Trinis as well as foreigners? Or? Well, I will say yes to that. Some of the foreigners normally come and they ask for it, you know, but when they see it, you know, normally they will say, you know, what is this? And, you know, I'm going to, you know, try to... You see this crab looking at them? They say, what is yes, that? but I am going to explain <laughs> it to them how to eat it and, you know, they are... You know, they, they normally manage it. Oh, yeah. As mm -hmm. you're talking about Trinis and foreigners, uh, uh, which group you get the most of here in Stobie? Um, Trini. And um, is there a busiest time of the year than other times? Or? Yeah, for the August, you know, for the boat race, it is very much busy here. Oh, plenty of yeah. people, real pressure, uh, I'm a sure. Lot, yes. Mm -hmm. Pressure, pressure, they're cooking yes. from what? Early in the morning? Yeah, well, we normally start around 6 and, you know, we go until around 11 in the night, you know, accordingly to how From 6 in the morning? Yeah, mm hmm. And it's constant sales yes. right through? Yes, a lot. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> must be a wealthy woman after the August holidays. <laughs> yes, my dear. <laughs> Do you see yourself as being part of the tourism industry? Oh yes, you know, because I love, you know, to deal with the tourists. I love to explain, you know, the local dishes to them. Uh, yes. mm -hmm. uh, so you see yourself as being an expert on local food? Yes. And giving them an insight into yes. good local food. Yes. Not just <laughs> any local food, the Sylvia's good, good local. Lo yes, yeah, Miss Sylvia's good local dishes, yes. <laughs> no. You know, I've been chatting here with Miss Alice and, and, and she has really given us a little bit of an insight into how people in different areas form part of the Inside Tourism Trust and, and you know, making tourism accessible to domestic, domestic tourists, trainees like myself and the foreigners. Thanks a lot. Okay then, All you're right. welcome. It's nice a pleasure and I'm coming off okay. some crab and dumpling. Okay then. <laughs> I want a big, big serving. Okay then. <laughs> Alright, okay. back to you Natasha. Okay. We're in downtown Scarborough. There's a lot of action and activity. It's very busy. Now in Tobago, the tourist usually gets around by taxi. Cecil Lyon has been working for over 40 years, close to 50 years he says, and he has won himself numerous awards and commendations for his work. So he's very familiar with the face of tourism. Isn't that right, Mr. Leon? Quite well. Would you say that this is a, a viable source of income for any young person? Would you recommend this job for anyone? Yes. Why? Well, I have been in it all these years. I have made my living from it. Even though I am not getting that much business today. But I would recommend that and encourage young people into it. Well, in Tobago, the tourism sector is growing pretty rapidly. And we always will need more and more drivers. Mr. Lyons, it's been a pleasure hanging out with you and, and chatting with you at the Scarborough Port. I'm having a wonderful time. Thanks very, very much right. for agreeing to speak with I us. I am very proud of having my fingers in such tender hands. Ah! <laughs> I'm here in Inside Tourism in Tobago. Now, no overview of tourism in Tobago would be complete without some inclusion of the Buku Goat Race Festival. Now, I'm here speaking to the chairman of the Buku Goat Race Festival, which actually has been around for over 73 years. Now, the festival that is. Mr. Murray, Sonny Murray is his name. Mr. Murray, welcome to Inside Tourism. Thank you very much. And uh, could you tell me a little bit about your involvement with the Buku Goat Race Festival over the years? Okay, actually, I've been involved in goat racing for the past 35 years which I started as an owner and trainer. I attempted to do some jockeying, but I, I failed with that. What is jockeying? But running of the goats. Running of the goats? Yeah. Now I hold the executive position as chairman of the Goat Race Festival Committee. The total responsibility too was developing the sporting activity. Okay, as you go, I don't know if you all are picking this up, but we have a little goat in the midst here. Tiger Shark, I think is his name. Yes, Tiger uh, Shark. He's won some races and stuff. Yes. Okay, uh, premier goat race, goat racing, goat, tiger shark. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Murray, um, tell me a little bit about the festival and, and, and how it's run. You know, I, I, I'm not so sure if it's just, just at one point in the year. Are there several times you run it during the year? Give what what we do early, goat racing, we, it's the prime time, it's Easter Tuesday. Mm -hmm. 
we try to create the opportunity for tourists who would be around the carnival time. So we have a boat racing the first Sunday after carnival, mm. every year. Um, other events we have, apart from the Easter Tuesday, we have on Emancipation Day. Those are three major days that we have the boat racing. Do you think the festival is growing over the years? It's remaining static? Are you getting more and more people coming out to it? Um, the response would show that it has been a tremendous, you know, an increase in the response from people. Uh -huh. There has been a great, tremendous increase in participation from sponsors. Do you have mostly Trinidadians coming across or do you have a lot of tourists? Is it a mix? What, what sort of um, participation you get from? I think it, it's really, it's a mixture. A mixture? Yeah, it's a mixture. A lot of tourists do involve and get very much, you know, they enjoy it. In fact, what happened this year, we have tourists that own good and take part in goat racing every year. Oh, they so come down just to take part in goat oh, racing. So you mean they have goats that they import and bring down? No, not so from have... Tobago. They bought goats in Tobago and just for the fun of it. Oh, they actually race they, their yeah, own they get goats. Involved, yeah. uh, what, what is the key to, to, how do you teach a goat to race? How do you do that? Well, the very first thing you need to look at the breeding. Mm -hmm. It's important that you look at the, the, the choice, right? So you don't go and take a goat because of its color. Uh -huh. So you look at the breeding. Many persons would look at the Anglo cross with the Sinan or the Anglo with the Alpine. Cross breeds are, cross breed, are yes. the better races yeah, are the better than races. the pure breeds. They stand up to pure the pure bread. Yeah. Yeah. It has been a pleasure chit chatting with Thank you. Thank you very much. Man. Okay, Tiger Shark. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The genesis of tourism in the Bego has not been very similar to others in the sense that some destinations would have seen um, the uh, a whole need for economic growth and the investor coming in and setting up on sterile landscapes. This grew out of, as I said, movements of persons and the children, okay? What therefore developed is a very integrative kind of tourism, be um, very people-oriented, and uh, not in along the lines of strictly business. So um, there has been embrace in the sector. The local population or host population really being part of and uh, of the whole. We have recognized, when I say we, the THA has recognized what needs to be done. An integrated form of cultural tourism is what we are pursuing. Um, that, when I say integrated form of cultural tourism, I, me I mean um, a product that is built around the people as well as the island's physical and environmental strengths. So integrated from that sense. One, with, one without the other won't go. And we believe if we hold fast to this um, uh, method, we can see and we can realize um, the development of quite a, a sustaining and sustainable um, industry here in Tobago. Well, that's all the hospitality we can fit into 15 minutes. Yes, and we have some serious vacationing to do now. Yes. Natasha, say bye. Bye. Bye-bye, all right. See serious ya. vacationing. Serious, serious, serious. Uh, we have to teach you some manners. Oh, and... okay. <laughs> ay, ay, ay.